Have you gone to build a report lately in the Power BI desktop? And when you get to the data modeling portion, you all of a sudden get a new pop-up screen. Well, let's talk about that. Let's see what has changed in that modeling view and what are we gonna do about it? So my name is Alice Gonzalez. I am a Microsoft certified trainer. We're gonna go dive into Power BI. We're gonna take a look at a report. We're gonna look at one that's got multiple different tables. We wanna get those tables connected. So let's see what's gonna happen when we build those relationships in the Power BI desktop. Before we get to the video, I just wanna let you know, if you are interested in more in-depth Power BI training, head on over to prague.work slash Allison40, and that's gonna give you 40% off an annual subscription to our on-demand learning platform where you have access to hundreds of different classes. Now onto the video. So this change came about in the May 2024 update, kind of flew under the radar a little bit because the May update I think was a little bit late in this in the month. So with this May update, you will see now that there is a new manage relationship kind of situation that happened. Now, prior to this, if you're on any one of those older views, if you are doing an imported data model, when you go to build your relationship, all you do prior to this would be a drag and drop. So for example, between my date table and my fact table, my internet sales table, all I would do prior was drag my date column from my date table over to what I wanted to match it to on my sales table, which in this case, generally, I'm going to do order. Now, this is what is new. We now get a pop-up. If you generally just work with direct query, you'll be used to this window because if you do direct query, you always essentially see this window coming up when you do this. And this is now new that is coming up for the import relationships. And I can see why this change was made. So often I will see people accidentally build the relationship on the wrong column, right? You're dragging and dropping. It's not incredibly obvious. I would say it's a lot more obvious if you do data modeling and power pivot in Excel, but here it's not as obvious. So this gives you a really nice way to see, it. I'll be like, okay, I dropped it on date and order date and make sure that those are really the correct ones. You can see exactly how you created a one-to-many or a many-to-many -many or a one-to-one -one right here in this window. You can verify you want that to be an active relationship at that time. And if you need to change any of that cross-filter direction, you can do this in this window. Now, again, this window is nothing new, but it what is new is that it comes up now when you are doing the drag and drop relationship on an import table. We have another new kind of changed view as well. When we come up to the manage relationship button in your home ribbon here in your modeling view, when I click on that manage relationship window, prior to this, it was, uh, it just, it was really similar to this, but it just wasn't as, I would say fancy. We got some new buttons. We got some new looks to this. So let's go over what we can see here. So we're going to be able to see all of the relationships that we have. We just made one and we can see it's from internet sales to the date table. I can see that it is very clearly a many to one. I can see exactly what size the many, which one's a one. And I can see that carnality of the many to one with that cross filter direction. I can also verify that it is in fact active. From here, I can make additional new relationships. Now, some people prefer to do this, and this is very similar if you were doing a merge in Power Query, right? This window. So you might really like the logic behind, hey, I'm going to pick my main fact table, and then I'm going to pick the next table that I want to connect to, and then look at that. It's helping. A lot of times, this is kind of some of that auto feature, right? Power BI, anytime you come out of Power Query or anytime you're importing data in, it's automatically going to try to build those relationships for you. I, in fact, in this model, I had to break all my relationships so I could, in fact, show you how to rebuild them. So we can see it's automatically picking up that, that key column exists from the two tables that we selected. I didn't have to do anything else. It's identifying the cardinality for me, and I can just hit save. Let me show you one other feature inside of that manage relationship window. So now I can see the two I have. I'm going to go to auto detect. 
And when I click on this auto detect button here in this manage relationship window, let's give it a second to do its magic. And boom, it went through and it found four other relationships. Now we always want to verify, right? We always need to check and verify to make sure that it is pulling over the correct information, that the relationships are set correctly. But again, that auto detect feature is nice to have now here in this manage relationship window. So for some reason, if when the data was imported, it did not automatically detect it. Or for example, you had to create key columns in DAX, right? That one automatically then detect those. You would then come over here and you could hit that auto detect and hopefully it would pick that up. So then I can close, I can verify that everything is set up the way that I want it to be. I can see that some of those, it didn't pick up the one from the temperature table. And I actually have, where are we going? Geography is connected to multiples, right? So I might not need all these. So any ones I don't like, I can go ahead and just break those relationships, delete those. So I wanna make a relationship here between my temperature table and my internet sales table, but it is built off of this key column. And the way that this key column is built is with related table. Now, because I broke all my relationships so I could show you how to remake them, it is not recognizing the relationship because remember how I broke that relationship that was over here? Because I would have created some circular logic here, this relationship is currently inactive. So for my key to work, I need to make this active. So I'm gonna to go to my properties. We're gonna change this to a make this relationship active and hit save. You can also do this in your properties pane. So over here in your properties pane, if you have a relationship selected, you can also change all that information right over here. Generally, I like to work in this view, but it really just depends on which one you're working with the most. So now that we have an active relationship, our temperature key is happy. So I can go temperature key to key. There we go, it's showing up, it's legitimate, and there we go. Now, there is also one additional thing in this manage relationship window that is really cool and it's new, and it is this filter option. So now I can, especially if I'm looking at a ton of tables, I have a really big model, right? I can go through and be like, hey, you know what? I just wanna see all of my one-to-one -one relationships or all of the many to one, or maybe the many to many, right? So you can go through, if you have a lot, maybe use the auto detect and you're like, all right, let me just start like weeding through this really quickly, just verify that they were all set correctly. You can kind of start filtering and going in here. And then also you can go through that cross filter direction. Maybe I wanna see anything that's set to both, or maybe just set to single, right? And I could go through and find all of those things in that filter pane. So those are some of the really cool features and changes to the modeling view. When we switched over from kind of model to semantic model, really the verbiage change, and now we got some cool updates to this interface as well. I'm not gonna lie though, I do get a little bit of annoying when I'm dragging and dropping and I know I'm putting it the right spot and I have the window pop up and I have to do an extra click, but it is a good fail safe to make sure that you are clicking and putting things in the right place. For all of you that used your query already, you're gonna say nothing's new. Same for me, we just get some extra buttons in here now. So hopefully this helped explain things for you if you were all of a sudden in your modeling view and wondering why in the world am I getting this extra window? Well, now you can see the extra features that you get with it as well. Don't forget, drop a like below. Also comment what is your favorite latest feature to get added to the Power BI desktop. And hey, if we don't have a video on it, maybe I will make one for you.